Mike and Hayden are best friends. They spend all their time together. But recently, Hayden can't get his mind off his GD phone. Welcome to the Assorted Kinds Independent Filmmaking Podcast. In this episode, we are talking about our film Heads Up with co-creators Michael Morrissey Howdy. and Hayden Harrower. Hello. I'm Christopher Ryan Laughter. And I'm Kevin Rosenquan, and we'll be your co-hosts for today's episode. Okay. Join so, us. Join, yeah, we're on a ride. Here Please. we go. And uh, what is this short film all about, gentlemen? This short film is all about just two pals palling around. Okay. It's about No, it's about... Um, a bridge. It's about two people who are uh, witnessing the end of the world. Uh, one person who is a little more aware, and as as the end of the world is coming closer and closer, he realizes his friend not only doesn't really recognize exactly what's happening, how unaware he's been for probably his entire life since the iPhone emerged. Yeah, it's really it's it was really about people who just um, are aware of life on one plane. And in, in, in how, how, how much can we heighten that kind of duality, right? Can, can you see what's actually in front of you? And I think that's kind of what it's about. Yeah. Sometimes I think about people walking on the phone on their phone, uh, walking down the street on They're their phone. They're walking on their phone. They're oh, walking on their phone on the phone. Yeah. They're walking on the phone. street on their phone, and I'm like, hey, uh, watch out for that tree. Yeah. Like, hey, what, or don't like you're about to cross the street. Yeah. And like, just hey. like still got there. <laughs> yeah. 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 The there There's are dangers coming. all around Do you. That. Yeah. There's a world all around you. In fact. Yeah. But it happened. Yeah. It does happen. Every, I remember it was eight, seven years ago. Yeah. Hayden was what we were. We were at school like not. This is a long time ago. We were at school, and I remember you almost got hit by a skateboarder or something. And you're very, very much Hayden. Like doesn't really use Instagram. Doesn't use his phone all that often. He's like, I'm that person. I almost got hurt because I was like looking at my. It's unavoidable sometimes. Even today, we were driving, and Hayden, I was like. Driving here, I was like trying to maybe pick him up, and I was on the highway, like on my. I was like, "This is dangerous. Why am I doing this?" Yeah. And what's fun about the 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 short that we made was like very much a heightening sense of like, not only does this person not see that there's missiles in the sky, it's almost like he's looking at the sky for the first time. He yeah. doesn't know what clouds are. Right. He doesn't know what the sun is. He doesn't <laughs> know what a bird is. I love it's that level of absurdity. <laughs> it's like why I like this the state over like Saturday Night Live. Oh my Maybe god! Yeah, because yeah. yeah. there's this like extra level of of just absolute absurdity. <laughs> it's absurd. What it's if? Like, and that's what we love. Like, right? It, it, yeah. exa- it exactly yeah. is. It's yeah. like let's like yes and and heighten this. Really, what could be boiled down to like, you've never looked up from your phone. It's yeah. like, what if he doesn't know like that what a missile is? No, what if he doesn't know what a, a cloud is? Right. What if he doesn't even know what the sun is? Right. And it's like, just keeps going. We just had so much fun with like heightening, heightening. Like someone says this, and then this, and then this, and just goes and goes. And what's what's really awesome about it is like the whole time these guys are just having a conversation, and they're not letting everything else around them, which is chaos ensuing behind them and around them, and even to them sometimes phase their conversation. So, the my character is totally oblivious to life, but also both of our characters Absolutely. are oblivious to the <laughs> whole situation. So it's kind of a meta thing on too, on top of it. Exactly, especially at the end of like you think the mic character is he's pointing out all the flaws of like you're so obsessed with your phone you're so right. and then by the end in the last moments of life he's oh you know you are the problem like, you're, <laughs> you're on facebook news dude oh, i last, get all my i read the, the new york times yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. He dies. the last thing he does before he dies is scolding someone uh, in a pretentious yeah. way for some other way of you know being which i feel like so many riffs and like jokes that hayden and i do like yeah just get so heightened to the idea of like in the last, and we just kept talking about like in the last few minutes, if there really was a missile, if there really was, the mm-hmm. world was going to end. Like what would we really do? Everyone would just like blame each other and like freak out. And like no one would <laughs> yeah. do any of the cool things that we could do in no. the last few minutes of life. Definitely. And so that's like, that kind of explains like the, the plot of it. Did, uh, did, uh, did you guys come up with doing it in a one or at that time when you were figuring that uh, sort of story out or that did that come after the, the whole concept was was figured you out you mean the way we shot it is that what you're asking right yeah all shot in one you know one go uh that was kind of i think developed as we went i think right it was sort of like here is what was going on but then as we were writing it it was just one interaction yeah you and know, I think I can't remember who came up with it first, but we love that idea of like it's, it is just this one conversation. I think the way it was pitched to Matt in the beginning was like we want to watch this minute 
so stupid normal conversation happening and we want like absolute chaos in the back and then it just came to like what if it's just one running shot of let's have like absolute badness in the back and it was a little bit of matt's idea who who really helped us direct matt devino matt devino, matt devino yeah. yeah who really helped us direct the the short because this was really early on in us writing and, and trying to produce things this was probably one of our first projects together yeah. that we did and i think it was the first project we pitched to you guys i think right so this is the second project you guys did through Assorted Kinds, and yet it yeah. was actually it was shot, shot before, before the yeah. before car It was guys. actually technically picked up by Assorted Kinds. Picked yeah. up by, yeah, okay, yeah. right. So you guys, you had, so you well, screened it at a festival, <laughs> and, and we showed Chris up. Chris bought it, yeah, yeah, it was very of, expensive. I had a, there was a bidding war, it, was, it yeah. got wild. There was just a long table is all I yeah. remember. And, all right, uh, so pipe dreams aside. Yeah. Um, let's, let's talk a little bit about like um, our oh, right with the sort of kinds we bring scripts in, yep. we pitch them to each other, mm -hmm. and then we vote on scripts. And um, this one got brought in, and it didn't get picked in a month. But um, you guys are pretty adamant on just like, hey, we really want to make something. Yeah, and like we just want to make it. And it's so simple. Yeah, I think we're just gonna make it. So simple, <laughs> but but it, my God, it, it really crazy. was. It really was, and like that, uh, this whole thing kind of started as it, this was. We were writing this in our earlier, sorry, in our earlier days. I'm like screaming from the back of the room. We wrote this in our mm -hmm. kind of earlier days of <clears throat> we're going to be good at writing. Let's just write as much as possible, and. I wrote this idea out based on a, a fake scene from a, Hayden and I had had this idea for a web series one day of <clears throat> two, the whole series was going to be two guys waiting at a stoplight that, ne or a, at a walk light that, I don't even know if you remember <laughs> this, waiting at a walk light that just like, like took a real, there, there's one specifically on Sunset and yeah. that like right by the Vista Theater that just oh, takes the five way. so yeah. the five long. Way. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Five way. And I think yeah. we were just five walking way. one day and I was, we were having this long conversation waiting to be able to walk and we just kept joking of like, we could have a whole, it would be fun to have like a three minute web series where every episode they're just like, have clearly been waiting for so long <laughs> that they're getting into all like depths yeah. of, and that's where it kind of started of this idea was like, <clears throat> oh, what if like there's a missile and this guy looks up and just like it just kept that heightening of like doesn't know what the sun is, doesn't know what the clouds are. And we were just so adamant about like writing and I'm just we're just gonna write every day and we're gonna write every idea we have. So I remember we just kind of wrote that idea of like this is an idea we have, it's good enough, we're gonna write it. <clears throat> uh we sent it to the film club. You guys had really, really cool stuff to say. We weren't at the meeting yet because we were oh, still you guys, very we were, new. You guys were Skyping in, right? Are we, we didn't even we Skype in. Tell it. them the actual story of how we submitted it and uh, how you guys even found out about it. Yeah, we did yeah, not yeah. Know. I didn't know if we wanted we the We did not real know story. it was going to be actually <laughs> oh. reviewed by everybody. We had a few things that we were really, really gung-ho working on. I think uh, we had some ideas that we were really, really writing hard. And then I I wrote this one out just based off that conversation we had. And I sent it to Matt for a little bit of feedback. I was like, hey, this is like a first draft I wrote, kind of a silly idea that we like. <clears throat> and next thing you know, Matt was like, are you with Hayden? Are you home? And we were like, oh, uh, <laughs> I'm yeah. outside your house right now. Will you open your front even door? Worse, not even far worse. from it. I pulled out. He was I like, cool. Wish that would happen. I get a FaceTime from Matt. And I was like, oh, maybe he's going to give me and Hayden notes. And it was just all of you. And Damn. everybody had something to say. We had no idea. Yeah. Yeah. We had no idea. No we idea. We had I no had no idea that that's how this was playing oh, out. Oh, but that's no, the no genius idea. of Matt Devino is that. he was just like... I think on he threw some, us into the fire, man. He genius. did. He just threw us right in, and that's everybody. Genius. And that's even funnier that I didn't know that you guys didn't. I didn't know what happened in that meeting. No. So, uh, and as young, <laughs> as younger, ambitious writers, it wasn't the first thing I wanted everyone to see. Yeah, but we had other projects we were more. But excited no, about. I was working on on Catfished, another story oh, yeah, that we true. talked about later. Yeah, but true. I was working on this thing so so hard, and all of a sudden, this this little project that we were like, we both kind of talked about. I had. We, we were sitting there with all these people, really, really smart people, who apparently also didn't know that we weren't really considering it. You guys had all these really, really smart ideas yeah. and really great thoughts. <clears throat> and then Matt called us the next day and was like, hey, so it didn't get picked. We're going in another direction. What did you guys think of the feedback? We, we thought it was really good. And he was like, what did you like about it? And I was, we were like, well, I, I, was, I remember saying, like, oh, I liked... You know, Chris had some like crazy ideas of like the, the main theme of like the feedback was like, let's get bigger. Let's heighten it more and more and more. 
And I was like, I thought that was cool. I liked the idea of like, Chris was like, I would love to see somebody on fire. And it was like, I would love to see someone like this. Yeah. I, and then, so Matt was like, oh, cool. Write 20 ideas of bigger things you want to see and just yeah. send it to me. <laughs> which, is, which, is a, which is which a fun is, thing to ask both yeah, of them. That's fun thing. awesome. I wish someone would. It, you know, it, it was right. the <laughs> coolest yeah, thing he could have write asked. Write 20 crazy things and just send them to me. Okay? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. he was like, he was like I'll be right back. He was All like, right. if you like the idea of it getting bigger, what would you like? He was like, don't worry about production. Don't worry about money. Yeah, which is write smart. what you want to see. Yeah. And we had so many, so many. We blocked like, out time because we were like, we yes, spent this two hours. And we're like, let's. we came home. We're like, this is our night. We're going to do two hours. We were in his room. We had a whiteboard and we went nuts. Wild. We just, everything we could think of, we just wrote on paper. I think maybe two of those things ended up maybe. making it. Yeah, we were like, a man yeah, is just like kind of similar to in uh, Anchorman, like a man just kind of like walking down the street fully inflamed. I think I had like, an idea about a cockroach that we wasn't did. You remember? worried. It was like the that cockroach. wasn't worried at all because it like, like, hey, what's up to me? It I'm like gonna... zoomed in. <laughs> this is so is stupid. It was like, this is the end of that. It was probably one in the morning. We were I like, would have picked it. The last had I been directing, I know you. I know you would have. The last, the last idea on the list was like the bomb comes down, and then after the explosion, it zooms in on two cockroaches, and one cockroach says, "Hey, can you believe this, guys?" Oh, and, then yes. the other, and then the other guy says, when "Absolutely." The, when the fuck did you learn how to talk? Yeah. <laughs> like, so yeah. Matt, Matt calls Matt, emails us the next day. He goes, "Okay, so the thing of the cockroaches definitely can happen." <laughs> Because we just didn't know. We didn't know. I had no idea. And he was like, the, the man on fire, we could maybe work it out, but I don't know. Why don't you write, take some other ones that are a little more realistic. And I did a rewrite that yeah. had a lot of my friends in it. We had like maybe 10 or 11 people yeah. cast of like- It was supposed to be a lot of people in the Wild background. stuff was happening. We had yeah. like crazy, there was like a- like a, a World War II style kiss, but then the girls like beating the guy up and there was like a guy like chugging a bottle of whiskey. We were gonna have like a sugar glass and have to smash the bottle of all this crazy stuff. And then, so anyway, we had all these ideas and Matt was like, great, we're gonna shoot this in two weeks. Me and JR is gonna come and mm. do it. I've got the red camera and like JR we're gonna- JR shout out to him. Mm, yeah, seriously. Yes, and then, hero DPs. Yeah, hero DP. He so just then, keeps coming in so clutch. He's so great. He really was. And it was, it was, the greatest kind of thing of like, then as soon as he said that, it was like, let me get everybody, let me, let's get everybody we know who could be in it. Let's try to like, we did like six rewrites of just like re little refining things of now that we had this deadline, which I think is the, one of the best things I've learned from assorted kinds. Yeah. It's like deadline set, it's just like mm -hmm. put it on yeah, paper, well, yeah. set yourself. the dates, yeah. absolutely. And then this kind of, this little script started getting bigger and bigger and better and better. And then, Matt was like, great, we're gonna come in on Saturday. And then Friday, a bunch of my friends and like people we talked to, oh, well, I can only come for half the day where I right. really can't do it. So we just kind of did a final rewrite and was like, let's just cut it to the bare bones. What do you really need? <clears throat> and then Matt just said the day before, is like, block out exactly what you guys want. And I, I love that he had some great ideas. Like, we're gonna shoot it one shot. I'm gonna get the red camera, we're gonna walk it out spend the morning, get everyone together, block it out, have it ready. Me, JR, a few, um, Darren, uh, a few other people yeah, came Darren in. Mm -hmm. Amazing, Darren, it was awesome. <clears throat> and we just kind of came in and shot the whole thing. And, so you didn't do any of the blocking or anything like beforehand that was all kind of we, figured out on the on the morning of? We did. Mike was was working hard on that. From the, or I should say rehearsing, really. We, yeah, yeah, we did. We, we treated it. So we came from more of a theater background. So we, right. we just treated it as a rehearsal. Right. Matt actually couldn't be there until I think two in the afternoon or yeah. something like that. Which so, left oh, us okay. like four hours of daylight. So we just, that whole morning, I think since like seven that day, we just did, we, we rehearsed it again and again and again. And then we, we walked the entire street which uh, do we say on the podcast we didn't have a permit for that's fine uh, uh it was it was cool we definitely should not have been waving the gun on the street uh, yeah that, that was ooh. very ooh. neighbors very, neighbors, neighbors like, were cool okay we're not gonna yeah. do anything with the gun we like the gun cannot be out like oh man yeah that's right we had a fake about we that. had a fake yeah. toy gun we had a guy who was in anyone blood sees who was covered in blood screaming mm -hmm. that was fun. little uh, sort of kinds easter egg mm -hmm. the man covered in blood yep. who shoots his head off 
is actually Kenny Gray, our very talented mm. friend from Boston, Mass, who did the music for <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, Car, Car Guys, guys and, and for Last One mm-hmm. Screaming. And he's he's had his finger in a We just a really appreciate everything you've done for us. Can you just cover yourself in blood? Yeah. Oh, and oh, are you kidding me? He was, wanted to do that. He, yeah. Yeah. Okay. he flew in from yeah. Boston just to do that just role. He's eminently game. I love it. He, yeah. was, he was down. He was loved that stuff. But, but awesome. the, thesis of where it came from was the best part about the be- absolute best biggest learning opportunity from that project and the, my favorite thing about that project was it was really brought on by someone you look up to someone d- like Matt Devino talented and good at what he does yeah. giving the reins and being like you can do this and when inevitably like troubleshooting ar- arises and friend actors who Fr- like friends kind of back out and, and things like that. It came down to the essentials of like, I know Hayden's going to be there. I know he's going to be funny. Yep. Um, <clears throat> our friend Kenny is like one of the funniest people we know. Yep. Like let's get the, the best people we know and let's just do it. And everyone came through and it was, it, it rocked. It, the day was amazing. It was right. so much fun. It was right. a true splinter crew. We had, I think maybe three on the crew. Yeah. We micro four crew. Or five in the, yeah. in the, I think we had Morton cast and we didn't crew, which is pretty yeah. cool. Do you guys know anything about, can you speak at all to like what you shot on or if there was any sort of special rig that was set up to, we, to handle the one we had the, the over, Oh, it's like an, it's called an easy rig. It's yeah. like a, it's like a scorpion tail that yep. comes up above the top. This is only for the, the video, yep. the video watchers only will see my hand making the scorpion tail but motion you can imagine above a the head tail, you audio uh, and it holds, it holds the weight of the camera. Up so and, over. And, and our man, J.R. Krause was on top of that all day. He was great. Nice. So awesome. Yeah. And despite the thing <coughs> taking a lot of your weight, it's still very heavy and difficult to, to handle is. for long walks backwards, which I'm sure he, because he was walking backwards the entire yep. time, The whole right? time, yeah. yeah. Yeah, which was really hard to do. But nailed it, and it looked great. I mean, it would have cer- it would have certainly been a completely different thing if everything was cutaways, if you were cutting away at yeah. all those moments happening. It would have a just a completely different, uh, and I might argue, less interesting uh, dynamic. So mm-hmm. yeah, it was awesome that you, you guys went for it. Thank you. Um, I, I mean, what do you guys, what, what do you, like, there's a lot of, uh, there's some visual effects, there's some, like, mm-hmm. gags, there's all these yeah. things in it, right? And, like, yeah. what's the, what, what, talk to me about the fun part of that. Oh, man, I think, I think it was the blocking of everybody behind. I think I have, yeah. every time I watch it, I have way more fun watching what's going on behind us <laughs> than what's, I think my favorite part was something that we, we, I think we thought of either on the day or a little, I think it was on the day where if you watch, what we wanted to do was a continuous shot, but we wanted Kenny's care, our friend Kenny, who's covered in blood, oh, we, wanted, yeah. we wanted him to, sh- to shoot himself to die, but we wanted <laughs> it to still be part of the cut. And we didn't want it to be an easy thing where he just went off screen and you heard the gunshot. We really wanted to heighten us not ever really in, like um, coming into contact right. with the chaos around us. So what you see is you see Kenny running in front of the camera, being outside of the shot. You hear the gunshot. And then if you look closely, you see me and Mike walk over like his body. Step, big <laughs> step <laughs> over. Big step over his body. With, and it took us a couple of takes to do that right. Because oh, we yeah. really wanted to make sure that we were just being normal, but then not regarding his dead body at all so our characters knew the dead body was on the ground but didn't ever acknowledge it in their in their acting which i think is the one of the my favorite parts about the about the short is like that moment when the the moment when we step over kenny's dead body of like (laughs) which i'll talk about that in a second but um when we walk over the dead body i think is the perfect thesis of the whole thing of like who is worse to blame it's like hayden's character who is so obsessed with his phone and now in the end is there he realizes he missed everything is that worse than his friend who's actively completely ignoring everything else to be self-righteous yeah. and to be in that finally be in a position of power of like oh i'm so much better than you of you've missed out on right. all these things i love when we watched right. it with with kevin before the, the the tonight was kevin was was laughing at the word gross because because kenny's character <laughs> comes up to mike with blood, and then Mike just says, oh, "Gross!" Know, so yeah, he just gross shoves him up. Of all the words you would have, right? It's and just going completely against his point of you yeah. need to be aware. Right. You need to be more aware of what's happening. When reality, it's like you're worse than him. Yeah. You're you're the worst. Right. And that takes it like a layer beyond just uh, a funny sketch comedy or, or, or situational type thing that's yeah. just just played for laughs. Where you can, if you want to, mine it a little deeper and and yeah. have it actually talk about interesting things about you know people's uh, you know awareness of 
horrible things that are going on and that sort of thing, but doing it in a way that uh, puts the absurdity and the comedy in the forefront allows you to be able to think about those sorts of things without it like being just a big like downer or something you don't want to you know yeah. talk about because it's so serious. So I love I love it when when you're able to to do those sorts of things with comedy. Yeah, yeah that's kind of package. Yeah. And, it's, and I, I do want to say there is nothing funny about killing yourself, but the reason that it was in there twice, <laughs> right, two of the, the gags are one guy blows his head off and the other guy tries, tries to, to hang, hang himself, himself but didn't really think it can't. through enough, is, the, is a, a, an ongoing, not even joke, conversation yeah. Hayden and I have is always the, the idea of it is if... To, I started hating since like so long ago where it's pretty much summed up with like if you and me are stuck in quicksand and we realize our, our knees are stuck and that's it and I'm thinking wow I'm definitely not getting out of it you're gonna look over at I'm gonna look over at you and like you're gonna look over at me and if I'm stuck in quicksand on my knees I will all immediately throw my head back and he's like <laughs> Hayden always used to say like if there's a meteor coming to the world I'm just gonna blow my head off instantly because I'd rather just not have to deal yeah. with like that two minutes take the easy way out take the easy way out yeah. and, I, and I love in Little Easter Egg too is that the very first thing you see is kind of the thesis of the whole thing which is actually Steph Davina which is Matt's sister who's our roommate another uh, little Easter egg I know oh. so many she's in the very Small very town. beginning and she's doing like an Instagram story at the very beginning she's like hey in the world it's me Steph and whatever so it really I got my glasses from yeah I got my glasses from so she's still in that that materialistic world would be happening you know it would that's right influencers be influencing no matter what always even towards the end even at the end of the world yeah Uh, so yeah there wasn't uh, so I guess because it's a wonder there's not a lot of editing that goes on in post there is a cutaway or whatever uh, but but there were like what was what was post like what was I mean, most of it was just trying to get the, the music, the sound, and the VFX right. I mean, we, we had the shots. Jer was great on the day. Um, Did you, can you do the music for this one as well or no? W- no, actually. Dude, you, might, my, you might know more about friend, this than I do. My friend Kevin Coggle, who is in a band called Goliathin. Oh, it's a of hit, it's a That's exactly fucking, the name of that band. It's like yep. a, just a... So gnarly good. metal band, exactly. so rad. Yeah, just zero to sixty immediately. <laughs> yeah. I love it. <laughs> Goliath, so Goliath Thin is really what gets me. And uh, so Matt Davino posted on Facebook like, "Hey, does my friends have like a metal band?" I'm like, "Oh fuck!" I just tagged Kevin. I'm like, "Kevin, you gotta like be on this shit." And yeah. uh, so ended up he ended up using Kevin's music, and Which it's just the end of the at the end of the thing. I'm so stoked. Which is what, what it, it needed. It needed that. It, I, I love it so much. I remember me and Hayden were at Matt Davino's house as he was editing. And just exactly going to what we said, uh, I think the last time we talked about just like Matt Davino, a, a director in the group, a hilarious guy of like, mm, just was editing through. And just we got to the very end. We, we were just talking about it. It's like, yeah. And then he says this. And then there's just a massive explosion. It was all over. And Matt was just like, oh, I know what this needs. And just like went and found this like the wildest, craziest yeah. Metallica song and put it in. And we were instantly like, Slayer, I think. Yeah, or Slayer, yeah, yeah. We were like, that's so funny. And then get you your heavy your... metal bands correct. Man. I'm sorry, hey, I'm on, sorry. Man. You guys are here for. Yeah. Come on, bud. Come on. You're the music supervisor. Don't be, don't be talking about Metallica. It's actually Slayer. I mean, totally <laughs> different things. Yeah, and that, that's really. I think the the the, the post really made the video. I, just, I think it was it was pretty funny on its own. It was pretty good on its own. But then when when everything else came afterwards, it really made it something better than what it was. I think. So post was a lot. I mean, for for this video specifically. Interesting. Yeah. 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 Have all missiles flying in. There were multiple shots of missiles. And that's the just giant a nuclear certainty. explosion. Yeah. Very. And I, I, that's the thing is like when because I feel like I was there. I want to say I was there when the script was read because I do remember re- hearing, def- hearing the you script. Were, I remember you gave and feedback. it maybe was like one of the first you yeah. know one of the first meetings I was ever at where I'm trying to figure out like what is it exactly that's being pitched here? What can we do? What can't we do? And when I saw that script, I was like, What are you? F- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why are we? <sighs> <laughs> That's how I, there's a meteorite blowing up the Griffith Observatory. I can't like, do this, but like, uh, so glad I was wrong on that yeah. one because you really can, and 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 yeah. it's uh, it, it's changed uh, you know my perspective on things where you can there's there's nothing there's no script no idea where you can't take the just distill the essence of it yeah. and then like you guys did you just you you rewrite you refine it you you figure out what assets you got and you re- you rewrite it even further and you can you can rewrite it as many times as you want and find all sorts of different alternatives and still keep the same uh, spine keep the same um, you know underlying themes and as long as you've kind of identified all those things you can make it happen 
Uh, and you guys did. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and it was a kudos to Matt. I mean, we we just we kind of gave it to him as just a friend to a friend to give us some feedback, and he turned that into a, a full panel that made us all blush. And <laughs> and then you know, and then when he came to us afterwards, like I love this, I want to do this, like let's let's do this, like whatever anybody else, let's just let's just do this. And I think that gave us the confidence. And I think if it wasn't for that, I don't know if we would have wrote everything else that we did and mm-hmm. pitched everything else we did. I mean, that was mm-hmm. a huge kind of feather in our cap. I mean, do you feel like you could have found? deflation in the rejection and then just kind of gone into your turtle shell i don't think it would have been as much of a turtle shell i just think it would have been more of like a oh okay they're doing something different than we can provide mm. like i think it was mm. more of like and it still took us time i think to acquiesce to to what you guys were looking for and i'm glad that we did i'm 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 actually really happy i think that process made us better writers i mm. think we we ended up doing a lot more stuff than we ever would have done because everybody else was like, oh, you're so funny, whatever. And there's not like a lot of feedback that kind of goes with that. Mm. But I think it would have been more of just like, I, I think we would have been more apprehensive to bring our stuff in because we didn't know that our voice would be valued in that. I kind of felt it happening. Like I felt it in yeah. the, just in the space because like, you guys were trying and trying and like kind of bringing different things and like, you know, and and, and you guys were new to it, right? And, and um, I'm thinking about the long term most of the time when things are happening and just like, man, like it's a bummer to to feel like people who were invited in aren't being embraced and how, and how would I feel in that mm-hmm. knowing how many times I felt rejected and mm-hmm. then in, and how I deal with that rejection yeah, and how I would potentially, well, fuck them. Like if they don't want like my participation, then like I'll go figure it out on my, on my own. Yeah. And, and I, my hope is that we're not creating that space, but that no. we're not, that we're not like, creating a disablement space well i mean let, let me let me turn the tables on you yeah a bit. let me let me ask you something i oh would boy. you would you th- do do you think that the flavor we brought in influenced you guys and the 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 scope that you guys was your acceptability because i we did we did a pitch other scripts that mm-hmm. didn't get you know, mm-hmm. feedback or would not feedback, but got got feedback, but wasn't always well received. Oh, they got feedback. Was, I remember the first. I remember one of the first ones where you got. Yeah, I, we I, got pans. Man, I was like sitting there, like, damn, like this is gnarly feedback. And you know, we've since kind of created parameters for feedback. Yeah, right. Since that meeting, I think. Yeah, because it was a big learning experience. Like, yeah, fuck, man, why are you guys giving feedback like that? Like, I, w- it's me not Mike, that helpful. I think me and Mike will always pin to our our figurative corkboard. We'll always. I'm not going to name the name, but mm. the quote was, it, "It's a sketch with no jokes." Was was our first. <laughs> that was a big. <laughs> and we, always, we would always go back to, but which I a sketch with no jokes. I will still say by this too. I still think it's amazing, but yeah, that's but, that's something that's sort of like I'm going to put that on here when it's. Yeah. You know, and wow. credit, but also credit to assorted kinds as I know I remember that script and I I really loved. The script that we pitched that got Still that feedback, yeah. and what I will give to assorted kinds, and especially I, I hate to bring it back to Matt and and Jr. and them, but as soon as I I really love that script, and as soon as it wasn't picked, the first thing we did was come back and say like fuck it, we're gonna do it anyway. Yeah. And granted, yeah. we put our efforts into a different project at that time, but it was like yeah. I think we people even though it wasn't picked we got positive feedback after right. of like hey i like that you tried this i loved that now it was this mm. and it gave us the confidence to be like we could definitely make this happen yeah. we know people who can help we are ready to do this so yeah. to, to your question right yeah. which was like how how were you guys able to kind of um adjust the sort of kinds by i think i don't know if i don't know if there was a big adjustment other than like oh that's a thing that could be made too mm-hmm Right, it's a it's the yes and metal and mentality. Right. Uh, except we, you know, we we definitely we always have the kind of like, is this a sketch or is this a short film? Right. And we want to be making short films specifically. Totally. Um, and yet there's been a couple of things that have teetered on the edge of being sketch. And this would definitely, I think, qualify. Definitely. As that. Yeah. 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 I mean, um, speaking of adjustment, though, I feel like. Like every everything during that period, like it's worth noting, like kind of where this is in the whole sort of kinds yeah. timeline, uh, and that this was like very early on. I feel like everything was an adjustment. Yeah. Like we were all learning, we were learning For from sure. from meeting to meeting about mm-hmm. trying to just solidify what right. what it was, and it's just uh, it's awesome that everybody at that time was really like brave and willing. Uh, both on the ends of people who are putting themselves out mm-hmm. there and then on the ends of assorted kinds for making that a space where people could do that. Yeah. Um, because, yeah. like, I could <laughs> I could think of, like, a story like that and then, like, never seeing you guys ever again. Like, sure. car guys doesn't exist, nothing which ever happens, bummer, yeah. which is, you know, 
I could, that could totally happen. But uh, I think uh, I think everybody appreciated that we were all in it together and still solidifying and, and figuring things out, and that each meeting was a little yeah. more refined than the last one. And so, and that well, the one thing I love about assorted kinds too, of like from a writer perspective, of people coming in to be writers, which I think is a great part of the group. Is I know Hayden and I's first big project outside of mm-hmm. assorted kinds when we were writing a, a much longer piece for somebody else mm-hmm. a, as aspiring writers, when it came time to someone <clears throat> picking us up and being like, oh, I want you to write this this film thing for me. And when we had to get the feedback of, I love what this is, but it, I don't want that. It's my thing and I want it to be this. Mm. We had already had practice being like, okay, well, let's take a little part of our ego and put it aside and let's yeah. be us in these walls. Let's be us inside this box for somebody else, which if you want to be a working writer, you have to mm-hmm. do that, Totally, which was awesome. Yeah, we kind of took that that panning of that one sketch, but also like just the feedback as sort of a badge of honor. Like mm-hmm. this is this is something. Oh, cool, we have this now. Like we have that pelt on the wall. Right. Like we were this. We knew that was going to happen at some point, especially writing comedy. Like you, most of the time, people are going to think that. So I think for us, it was it was probably a motivating factor for us to get rejected. It was like, well, let's show them wrong, mm-hmm. right? It was it was definitely a motivating factor in making heads up, right? It wasn't mm-hmm. that like we didn't have any gripes against you guys for for that one, but it was definitely like, uh, okay, people don't want this. Well, let's let's show them that we can do this mm. anyways. But then after that, after we wrote stuff, it was sort of like, let's let's keep going until we get something. Because how cool would it be for us to start as this, mm. but then to get it, finally at some point get accepted into to that realm of thinking? And like I said, we we needed that. I think we needed to ground Definitely. our sensibilities and to to get a taste of real dramatic story arcs that had story structure within it and all that, even within a short amount of time. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, let's give the audience context of like, sure. okay, so this thing doesn't get picked within Assorted Kinds. It, yep. gets, it gets kind of made as a outside project with Assorted Kinds members. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we're, we're you know, uh, let's say six or seven months in, in the future. Mm-hmm. And we're like, oh, man, we have this like monthly rollout schedule that yep. we're trying to stick to, right? Where we launch one film per month. Yeah. Very um, ambitious of us. Very ambitious. And... Um, we're like, all right, well, you know, we have Heads Up is done, and it's we're either going to put it out on our own, yeah. or we're going to put it out through Assorted Kinds. Right. And so, lay, you know, give me, give me context on that kind of, like, decision-making thing. I mean... I wasn't really a part of it. I just said, yeah, that would be awesome. Oh, that's interesting, because we didn't know that. I, th- I think... I think going into tonight, I don't think we did know that. Yeah. The theme of Heads Up is everyone but Matt DeVino being in the dark. Because I'm assuming... <laughs> yeah. He was the puppet master in all yeah. of this, I think. No, Matt just like... Matt's a bulldog. You know, yeah. like, uh, that's his personality. Just sure. like, he's really not thinking of outside of Matt. And mm-hmm. um, he just like, goes. And yeah. that's his that's his superpower. Yeah. That he's just like, we'll just push... Go. Yeah. Go, 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 go. Yeah, 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 Right? He's not going to overthink the edit. Nope. He's not going to overthink the why. Right. He's just like, no, let's just do it. Yeah. And sometimes he gets checked on that. Sometimes yeah. sometimes it's like, oh, that's really, like, yeah, man. That's why it's so great when the two of you guys are working together and yeah. why you guys are kind of cornerstones of assorted kinds and that why that works and doesn't, you guys don't spin off into opposite <laughs> orbits. You can have different personalities and have them orbit around each other and make something great. For sure. Yeah, because I definitely, I go, I think, a lot about a lot of the decisions. Very strategic. Yeah. Um, and it takes a while to be strategic. Yeah, I mean, I think we, we were just concerned about making it. Yeah. Like, I think, for me and Mike, I think, we, I mean, I don't want to speak for you too much, but I think for us, it was just like, we're in LA, we wanted to do comedy, we yeah. want, filmmaking was something we were like, okay, this is our opportunity. We have yeah. more of the opportunity than we actually have stage time. So, like, let's go with this. And we just kind of fell into it, started doing it more, we fell in love with the process of it. And then it just kind of became like, let's just get it done. Let's just get it done and let's have it be done and let it be pretty good. And then if it's on our YouTube channel, maybe we'll make a YouTube channel on our mm. own and we'll just do stuff. But then it, it ended up being, you know, it was it was on everybody's fifth priority, right? Mm. That that heads <laughs> yeah. up, right? So it was just like, yeah, then, we'll get to that. We'll get, we'll, yeah, we'll, figure, we'll figure it out. And there was no impetus to really get it done, so it was just sort of like, oh, we got to just do this little thing. I mean, I don't know, two months later, whatever. So it was like a year, maybe and a half down the road, we just still had it in the can, and we were like. 10% done away from oh, being right. done. And so then it was then it became something after we had the roll up plan it was like okay well if we ever get in a snafu where we don't have something ready let's just keep this in the in, yeah. the in the load and then like if you guys want it you can have it if not we'll try to do anything we can with it but obviously we were really gracious to like accept that mm-hmm. moniker and kind of going under that name especially now after having so many releases because 
you know, I don't, I don't know if we would have had the distribution rollout plan the way Assorted right. Kinds now has and yeah. all that. So, and it was definitely nice to have people in Assorted Kinds helping us as we're still learning stuff oh, all the God, time. Yeah. And I think that's a big, especially in making films and stuff like that. It's like recognizing opportunity has got to be half the job. Yeah. So I think Matt did a really great thing of be of reaching out to us first and saying like, "What are your plans for this? What do you, where do you want to release this?" <clears throat> we said, "Well, we think we maybe want to hold on to it until we have like a package of like five yeah. good things, and then maybe release them every few weeks." And he was, I think it it really just kind of came down to it's like, okay. But here's an opportunity to give it to a bunch of people who you work with who make good content, who yeah. need content now, mm -hmm. and you get a lot more eyes on it. Mm -hmm. And like that was a great up, like it definitely opened my eyes to <clears throat> the same way shooting it did when uh, yeah. JR and Darren and people came out. It's like that was an opportunity that if you just kind of ask for it or put yourself out there and yeah. like see if other people have shared interests, you can make something much bigger happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're stoked to have it released with a sort of kind. Yeah. 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 I'm glad there wasn't any sort of. Uh, preconceptions on either end uh, that would preclude us from doing that. I mean, yeah. uh, obviously, we're all using Assorted Kinds members uh, in in both yeah. projects anyway. It just makes makes sense. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we have our we have our like you know our template right, which is the choose at the beginning of the month, make it by the end of the month, and then you have a year to roll it out, kind right. of a thing. Um, and there are some of our films which are taking longer than a year. M one of mine is that, and I appreciate that we're able to launch this project to yeah. give me the time to do what I want to do with my second film. So sure, which I think you know, in the I think the lesson from that is I think we should you know try to encourage more members to do more smaller projects. That's what smaller I love projects. about it, like yeah. the, yeah. the assorted yeah. kinds like B sides, like the punk rock, like yeah. people right. like who just on our outside of the monthly film yeah. like making these other little which is even I mean it cooler. hasn't released yet so if you want to make a new bumper for that and B-Sides I think that's, that's pretty good it's not, uh, it's not bad, we're going to cut that out because it has released oh, oh no <laughs> yeah. you have to cut something out jokes on you guys it's already out there uh, <laughs> in the wor yeah okay so okay. Um, yeah you know there's there's been a lot of uh, I, I, I enjoy the chatter that happens in our kind of smaller group meetings where like mm -hmm. I, I've heard from some members like man it's just really the smaller relations and the smaller groups we've been able to form kind of like through Assorted Kinds mm -hmm. where we have these little teams that are talking about little ideas and like we can just do them with a little team mm -hmm. like are really special. Yeah. And that's kind of where a lot of the magic can happen and I think will happen more in the future. Yeah, um, It's like finding those little troops that are like, man, I just love working with you guys. Like, Let's just keep making some smaller stuff. We right, because need 15 people on set. Because there is collectives of people's sensibilities. Yeah. Right? Like you and Jacob and probably a couple other people have like sort of like this eclectic kind of sensibility, right? Mm -hmm. And Matt has the more like horror side. And, like mm -hmm. I think when I see the bumper for a sort of kinds, like I really feel the group mm -hmm. because it's like you scroll through each one and when it says like funny kind, I'm like oh that's me and Mike like you know what I mean like yeah, it's like yeah. there's different sensibilities there so like I think that there's so much room under that moniker to mm -hmm. like do these little side projects and it still fits it still fits right. in with what we're doing what do you guys think about like elaborating on those different monikers and like okay what if we were to say all right next year we're gonna do what if we were to unpack one genre Genre into yeah, a show. Correct. Genre. 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 Uh, what if we were to unpack even like one story into a series? Mm. Like, what do you guys think about and that? And people are already, their brains are already going there. Juan Gill, who we've mentioned yeah. before, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, working Up on a lot of things. He's working now on his second short that is within the same Ooh. MCU, if oh. you will. Yeah. Uh, you same say universe. universe. You say universe. Yeah. yeah, why would I even say MCU? The M and the C or don't even... Unless Captain America's showing up, I don't it's know. A, he it's might a, within be. the well, same ASK, bro. That's true. It's in the same... ASKU. 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 Uh, We're working on it. Workshop it. Workshop it. And uh, and you know I, I shot a thing that was uh, like the beginning of a much larger story that I mm. may you know even try to dip back into if I can. Mm. Don't tease us. Uh, but uh, I'm gonna tease you so hard. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Let's take this off. Like, <laughs> I don't even know where I was going. With yeah, that. <laughs> you're just talking about uh, universes. I don't. Know, I like the idea of thinking about okay, what is 2020, right? And this is strategy thinking about like all right. We've been doing a sort of kinds for two years. We're going into uh, as we do this podcast, we're going to production number 20, short Ooh. film number 20, yeah. which is yeah. pretty, pretty special. That's right. Um, and you know, like, all right, well, what is what does the next year look like, and how do we how do we expand the efforts to be something that is more about the audience's engagement and where they can like come back and expect like, mm. oh man, I want to like. 
I want to see more of Mailman, mm. right? Mm. What is what are the other doors the Mailman's knocking on in that? Well, that's world? interesting. I was gonna say where does the where's the demon go in Mailman? Yeah, well, he went into a cooler with some other people. That's we'll right. find out about that later. That's yeah. right. That's right. That's right. <gasps> are we all having shared universes within our shorts yeah, as well? God, I hope so. I do every time I see a little Easter egg, and I don't want to mention any because I'm scared <laughs> that one hasn't come out yet. But if you watch us, so if you're listening and you watch all the assorted kinds, there's so many little ones, and every that's time true. I see one, I like yeah, yeah. props, yeah. locations, yeah. actors. So that. we're all we're always yeah. re- reusing our talent. Um, yeah. I feel like Location. like uh, wh- what we've been, what we first started doing, which is w- related to what we're releasing now, and 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 heads up is one of those things. It was sort of a first phase that was all about like making, yeah. just making it, just making and it. and yeah. like it's just crazy how how. Y- we just nailed it time and time again to to get to number twenty in a row, not just twenty yeah. over the course of however many, in a just twenty row. twenty in a row. That I feel like our next phase now is about um, is about growth, and we're bringing in we're, we're aggressively trying to bring in new members, and I think that will um, that will get us to what we're talking about having the more pockets that are working on you know multiple things at once and and being able to. Uh, like handle all of that stuff mm-hmm. uh, and do it all simultaneously, which would be great. I mean, yeah. there's definitely a car guys too in the works, right? Oh my god, of course. <laughs> boat, boat guys. <laughs> yeah, boat man. guys. We're gonna need you to rent a boat. Uh, get <laughs> Turo, on that. Let's do it. Let's do it. Get on that. Yeah, but I do, I do love that idea. And what, like, I love what I love about what happens in the assorted kinds meeting, which I don't know how much you guys have talked about on the podcast, but it's it's so great. Of two moments, I always think I always think of like we normally write comedy Mm -hmm. sometimes like dramatic comedy um we have a drama script out there it's pretty good yeah we we do is it funny um no, not at all. Well, actually, it does have some. Oh, it's yeah. hilarious! I, yeah, it is very funny, actually. Very funny. I, don't I, I don't know what to promote it or not. No, not that. It's a different thing. Okay, okay, Ooh. all right. Um, but I love the moments of, especially when we write a comedy. I very much enjoy. I know who the other comedy writers are and the comedy nerds are in the room, and I you get a little more excited and nervous for their feedback of like, this is your domain. And another, I've never mentioned, but another, I forget who made, someone made a board, a vision board of like, I want to make this horror movie. I want to make it, I want it to look exactly like this. I remember, I think it was Matt, and I remember Kevin specifically being like, I really love this. I recognize every picture, every movie that you're talking about. And like, this is me. This is exactly what I want to do. So if you want help with this exact project, I'm in. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it was picked that month. So I think it's so cool that like in the pulse, it's like, I do love my favorite part is the, the tag of, um, our, the production logo of like seeing all the different kinds of like, you can kind of put faces to the names Mm -hmm. and which will be even more exciting as more pieces come out of like, Oh wow. These two people, People are gonna have a blast with this. Mm-hmm. Or like these two people have contradicting ideas and we see the mm-hmm. cool to see them come together. Yeah, I don't think I've seen a script get pitched that doesn't have some supporter in the crowd. Oh, yeah. even if yeah. it doesn't yeah. like we we would always uh, laugh because no matter I think everything we've pitched, Nicole, you're Oh my gosh. The amazing Nicole <laughs> producer, producer set designer or I'm sorry, slash, art designer. Slash better half of, of Chris Laughter she is slasher. Is yep. uh, is always like giving us this warm feedback of like I I don't care what anybody else says. <laughs> I know I everyone said this. it was weird. Yep. They said it sucked, but I like I love cool. it. That's why she's that sort of kind's mom. Yeah, and she's, she's like, she's and she wonderful. would come up to us afterwards, and be like, hey, if you guys are whenever you guys do this, I'll produce it. It's fine. Yeah, right? and she's you have really that support that. even if you don't get it from everybody else. Yeah, I mean, it's like nobody wants anybody to feel well. I can't say nobody, but like, there's always somebody who wants to make sure that the uh, the people in the room who are being vulnerable by sharing their scripts in the first place mm-hmm. right are are there's empathy to that there's support behind it there is uh you nobody is just like kicked in the nuts right. completely mm-hmm. right. and that's like, where i feel like our biggest shift from what we were talking about earlier in the notes and and uh and how we've kind of changed that is to you can still offer notes about how you would change something or whatever, but it's more about identifying uh, people being interested in things and being able to pull out, well, this is what people really were interested in about this script and let's focus on that Mm. and let's build the relationships between producers, writer, directors, and, you know, uh, foster it along its way. Uh, and I definitely think we're, we're doing that with every every script that's pitched, even if it doesn't get selected that much. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we're now we're moving a lot. We're moving really heavily into um, like a, 
saying, okay, if a script gets pitched and like it doesn't yeah. get chosen, like, well, who wants to help kind to of like develop it? S- yeah, spearhead that project so yeah. that the next month it comes in and it's like even more developed and really sure. more thought about. So, yeah, if anything, we really got to just like get more producers. We're asking all these producers to, you know, like we said, take the take these films all the way through post. And it's like, well, we can't ask the person who's supposed to be focusing on post now to also <laughs> come and pre- do pre production right. for, yeah. right. for our next thing. So, like, right. you know, producers are just. Uh, so important. It's like one of the last things that people want to throw their hat in for. Mm-hmm. It's the things people need. That's how you the learn, most. though. I mean, uh, that's that's where I started to step up in the group, and that's how I I could even think about directing. Something. Yeah, you're you're like the shining example of like if you're ever afraid to do it, like just look look at the sort of pathway mm-hmm. that Hayden took through it. He was never just kind of like having to deal with everything on his own at any given point, but he was able to use that as stepping stones mm-hmm. to get to the point where he's like can focus on a creative sort of thing. I mean, and you know, there are producers who just want to be producers as well. Oh, oh, yes. Yes. Like, God, we're, we're like, we don't... Wherever you necessarily, are, come yeah. to us. We yeah, don't necessarily know them, them because we're just not playing in those circles because we're all kind well, of we're like... we're focusing on production, like we were saying. Yeah, I mean... Shooting it, but... Right, we just want to, like, create and make projects. And at the end of the day, um, you know, half of producing is the business side of filmmaking. Yeah. And I, that's where I think... Uh, we're we're all kind of hacks at mm-hmm, it, right? Mm-hmm. And we're thinking about like I, you know, in, in regards to strategy and like the the business side of assorted kinds. I'm I'm kind of over here just tinkering, like mm-hmm. okay, what if I have ideas, I have thought bubbles, I'm bouncing them off of you guys, and I get feedback, and you know, we're we're like moving moving forward, but like I don't have a a college degree in filmmaking right. the producing side of filming i read some books you know yeah. i went to a community college for sure. filmmaking but like okay producers for dummies have you know, it on the bookshelf yeah. yeah. well i know how to walk forward yeah right i know how to like say yeah. well, i don't know how to do that but i'm gonna go figure it out right now yes i have to figure it out right now that's if, all it is yeah this is what it. college should be and i think you could go to a filmmaking department to, through a university and have no idea because you didn't read any books that were given to you. Yeah, that's what or I Or even had bad books mm. given to you. Like, Kevin, look at this <laughs> bozo. <laughs> so. four, four years of undergrad and I didn't learn any of that shit. Yeah. Don't, I had to, don't I had go to, to wait, college, kids. I had to wait till being in but I see, <laughs> But I see people coming out of like, you know, I have friends that just recently went through the AFI program, like, you know, way into their career, like, I'm going to go to AFI. Okay. I'm going to go back to AFI. I'm going to, like, go to the program because I want to be a producer. I want to mm-hmm. make films. I'm going to be legit. You know? Mm-hmm. And then I see them coming out of it, and, I f- and I'm and i I'm looking at their stories on Instagram. I'm like, whoa, like, you're, like, making, like, real stuff. It's, like, winning awards now, and, like, you're, at, you're talking like you know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. But I haven't, like, had coffee with that person to figure out what they actually learned through going to AFI. And yeah. is it just the network that you're now embedded in? Well, or the I, confidence I of having like, AFI on your your nameplate now, like, mm-hmm. is it that too? I mean, because a lot of producing is confidence, right? It's the confidence yeah. of just knowing or seeming like you know what you're doing mm-hmm. and having that presence on set mm-hmm. and being the controlling person there to try to make everything go right. Mm-hmm. Like, I think one of our best producers who didn't come from a you know a traditional path is probably Matt's Matt's significant other Janet Devino. <laughs> I mean, she's a producer. Her first she, time producing she, was. In a sort of kind. Yeah. yeah. And it was, you couldn't even tell. I mean, I, I thought she had been producing She's for a remarkable. while. I mean, she had that presence of a producer. Sure, she might blood. have had some things that she messed up that would have been easy for anybody else, but she had the the intangibles, right? And I think that's that's a really keeping important. you moving. Yeah. That's it. Like, as yeah. a creative, you need someone to keep you moving. Right. Right? Don't stop. Don't get stuck in your head. Don't right. get stuck in your decisions. And, like, some directors don't have that problem, but st- many do. Right. And um, that's, yeah, it's like, for me, like, I didn't, you never have a problem making a decision, but a decision doesn't mean anything if I don't actually take action afterwards. Sure, and that's sure. my biggest shortcoming when it comes to that sort of thing uh, and and where she excelled the most is that, you know, she... And that's why we worked together, I think, so well, even though she was doing a f- something for her first time is because there was never any... On choices. Y- yeah, for yeah, choices. Yeah. There was never, you know, there was never any point where I didn't know what I wanted or what needed to be done. And that was the only thing that she was lacking in experience is just not knowing, you know, wh- what were the things that she needed to tackle and as long as I could point those things out to her she had no problem like pursuing all those things along with Nicole who also produced yeah, amazing well. yeah Nicole and Jana like really powered they powerhouse. stepped up they stepped up and they said we got Kevin's back yeah, for it was great we're going 
And you know, to bring it back to heads up, I think what was what was really beneficial for us in doing that project first was we had to do all those rolls. Mm. Yeah, mm. like I think we bought, I think we bought like an extra large pizza from down the street to yep. feed everybody just because Shout we had out to Big Mamas and Papas, which oh, is yeah. no longer hey, ours. Crush. I used no to go to that spot all the time. Really? Big Mama. I lived yeah. in, I lived on Normandy, and That's I would go to Big serve. Mamas. It is and now Papas. it is now Cruiser Pizza. So shout oh, out to Cruiser. All well, vegan. if you're it's if a little you're chewy. Big Mamas and Papas, we're ready for you to sponsor us. Or or Cruiser, you're vegan and gluten free. It's fine, uh, but but just going back to that, like we, we also sponsor our nap time. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> we, but, uh, but but we had to do all that stuff. We had to do all of those different things. And so when you when it was time to be an associate producer for something and help right. out someone else's project, mm. it was like okay, I did some of that. Mm. I I understand what it what start to finish looks like. Let's just help to get there. Right. How do you, wh- how do you guys feel about the the like okay so we have this um it's like I want to say it's unspoken but it kind of is spoken because we have it in our uh, member kind of constitution what do we call that it's not a constitution of the film club it's the uh, uh it's the bill of bill of rights mm. Co- commission Damn, we gotta really give this thing Act? a name we gotta give this thing we call it a it member it does have a name I forget member. what it is. this is a really good time to workshop this whoa uh, we gotta no. workshop this name let's yeah. do this online right now play uh, the music Kevin yeah, <laughs> put it in your comments put the, what co- should the, the comments what should our member agreement be referred to as it's oh yeah it wasn't just a member kinds. agreement it's called I mean I think we just found it there's a better it's, mm. there is it's like gotta a pack. be a better it's like, way. It's like we call There's it when you come. Gotta be a better you come way. to the sort of kinds orientation. You like learn all about how we onboarding? how we do things. It's like an onboarding thing, <laughs> um, and we call we refer to it as like getting jumped into a sort of kinds. But just like an emotional jump in. It's not. No, like it's a, real. Oh, you guys don't do that anymore. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Not since the lawsuit. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. Um, Nasty black guy. Uh, so, damn, where was I going? With how we're we talking feel about, about the constitution, and then we yeah. got the whole. You said something when we get the member packed. Yeah. Damn, I lost my train of thought. Damn, Damn man, that was we did too, too many iPad joke tangents. You were looking at something. You were looking at something. Looking at something. No, I have a black screen. I don't. Yeah, and there's okay. nothing here. Yeah. Like, you where to me. next is what's written oh, down on my thing. Is that, is. Did I jog uh, it? Uh, yeah. No, Jumped okay, so it. the... How do you guys feel All about right, the... Again. No, if you... I love to talk about the... If you give to it... Mm-hmm. You shall receive from it. Mm. Okay, and I want to know you guys' perspective yeah, on this um, as kind of like you know, like I'm I'm in it. I'm consumed by it. I'm always thinking, strategizing how to like tweak things and turn knobs and like help and you know and make adjustments. Mm-hmm. But as as kind of players who are in and out, and, and you guys have your own, your lives outside of a sort of kinds. Mm-hmm. Um, how does that actually resonate? How do you feel it has worked for mm. the system for you? I feel like I've talked a lot, Mike, so you can go first. I mean, I just think what's beautiful about Assorted Kinds, and I think it's it's narrated through the kindness and the enthusiasm from everybody in the group, is it's a team effort. And what I what I really when I hear like you give and you get, it's like we spent we like I think everyone was very nice about listening and asking us, especially you, Chris, at the beginning, we're like, what do you what do you really want? And what we said is like we we want to be writers. And you said, well, we'll give you an outlet every single month to show us what you got. We're not going to take it every time, but we'll, we'll just, it, it was a great deadline for us of we spent hours and hours on so many different things and so many arguments about like what we didn't like about each other's work and like what, how to make it a common, how to make it a work together. And we kept coming back to what we like working together, even though I'm here and you're here. So <clears throat> we gave a lot of our time to assorted kinds and like, uh, and in working on the show shoots and writing the shoots and what we got out of it was by the time it was our time to by the time even outside of assorted kinds when we would get writing opportunities we weren't under any kind of pressure because we learned how to do that without even realizing it really happened Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we learned how to take feedback out on writing we learned how to write within parameters uh and even that even that like when uh, doing acting and stuff on set, I, when I, my first acting thing I did on screen, I was very, very nervous. I was very nervous that I was going to like mess up and waste everybody's time, but doing lights, doing PAing, doing any other thing, I was able to recognize I'm just doing my very best and I, you're just doing your best too. And when someone watching an actor, like forget their line, like, you know, they're still trying their best unless maybe, and you can tell if someone's not trying their best. So it's like, you give and you you're you're pushing yourself into the pro- the process and you're just getting experience and you're getting a lot of 
I don't know, we got a lot of really great friendships out of it. We got a lot of really great support and confidence in that. Mm. Like, it's okay to fail. It's a great platform to fail and have really smart people back you up and pick mm. it up so it, that no one sees it. I think, I think more than that, even just more concretely, it's like we put in... I can probably firmly say all of 2018 I spent with the Sorted Kinds. Mm. Mm-hmm. I think January we we filmed pre-recorded therapists mm. and we were both PAs on that. Yep. And then I ended December was when I directed Car Guys, and we produced Whoa. three things yeah, together. The one year program. Whoa, the That's one right. year project is like crash course. The associates let's go. Yeah. Fast degree. Tracking it. I think, ASU. Yeah, I think I PA'd for about two or three of them. Associate produced for two of them. Produced one of my own and then directed. And I. Uh, and I put it, we put a lot, and then I did some administrative stuff with you guys too mm. and, and helped with some of that. And I think, you know, we, we put in, I put in a lot of time, but I think what the currency of that, to, to name it, is trust. Mm-hmm. Like once, mm-hmm. once you're, what we vet people by bringing them on sets, you, you can't be a member without being on a set first, right? I mean, mm, whole, it has changed yeah. a little bit okay. where we now, it's like, um, you can be a member if somebody who's already a member is, says vouches for you, and then we give you three months to kind of like go through a trial membership. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay, and so it's a similar thing. Yeah, yep. it's, still, it's still like there's still a vetting process before you are a concrete member. It would be a big yeah. red flag if someone wasn't willing to do something yeah, right, for you, somebody. If you're just radio sound for the three months, then right. like you obviously. Don't I really just want to direct my that's right. right. It's like that person doesn't yeah. exist, and, well, that, be, and that's and not giving. Be, that's not giving. No, no, not at all. And so when I'm on set as a PA, I think the very first time we ever did it, me and Mike were just super eager and just we. I don't think the funny thing about that first one for us in pre-recorded therapist was it was in that tiny room. Oh man, the in, sauna in the sauna. So <laughs> so we we didn't even get to see any of it. Yeah. We were just outside the entire time. But we were having. Yeah. A, Can we're having, please be quiet? <laughs> yeah, we, we were just having a blast, and we were just like, I mean, water, water is anybody yeah and i remember you guys came up to us afterwards and like no that's what we need we need people with energy we need people to come in here who are just willing to help anything they can Mm -hmm. and i think that earned some trust from from us and you guys and i think that then bought us the patience Mm. to help us get through some of where we were at and kind of acclimate to what you guys were at and that Mm. and i definitely would have directed if i didn't put in the work with everybody else and it wasn't i don't think it's a tit for tat like oh you produce something so you get to direct it was like no i know the the kind of work you do yeah and i can trust and take a leap of faith with you because i've seen you do that that's the unspoken part of it right where it's like it's not about if you do this you will get this it's oh no like we've we understand that your heart is in it. You're here for a, 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 the same reason that I'm here. Right. You're here for the same reason that Kevin's here. You're here for the same reason Mike's here. Right. We're all in this together. Yeah. And you've said what you want to do. Right. And I, and I hear that. Right. And I, I can't wait to see you do it. Right. And if you're willing to help the group sustain, which yeah. is still you know a big drive, right? We got to make sure this thing keeps going, right? Yeah. It, it, I think that that's what you need to do. And I think going further like i think you guys kept giving me offers for stuff that i i couldn't always accept right mm-hmm. i've had to take kind of a step back for a little bit here to try to set some things up in my other my other life right mm-hmm. uh and so you know and pay I, the bills life and pay the bills uh, that'd yeah. be nice yeah. uh, 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 who wants for that uh, uh, those things and so like it, it was really cool for me to be like wow i've earned credibility with these people that they can trust me not to bring me back in on something and i think he was even david it was a real moment for me when i was i was gonna ride home from from david gallardo who directed nine two and I helped him I think I helped him produce Night 2 one of the ones I helped him produce something maybe it was Demon Cooler and he was on that too he was the first AD on Demon Cooler that's what it was I think mm. and he had drove me home and he was like dude if you want to produce on something I'm getting paid for I would pay you to produce oh, this oh that's cool he was like you're better than some of the producers I already work yeah, with yeah. and I was like whoa that's cool because you're learning something really tangible but you're doing it on the motivation of the purest motivation for filmmaking mm. so your motivation is going to be there to carry you through and make you I think a better uh, worker in that mm. environment. So mm. it was, you just, you keep getting stuff. And now we get to do stuff cool collaborate with you. Collaborator. Collaborator. Right. Yeah. I think yeah, that was sure. one of my favorite, like Camille and like so many cool people oh like gosh, starting. Camille. Yeah. Oh my God. Like so many people Such a cool guy. starting with something like Assorted Kinds where I think we said it at some point, like having no money involved and having people who are like, like that, like I'm working on a network TV show and mm-hmm. I, and like I'm spending my day off here because I like making movies and this is where it's at. Mm-hmm. Like jobs are jobs, but it's like this is a group of people who is all, all working together and we're like like this is just great. And like what cool people to learn from. Yeah. For a couple of muggles like me and Mike, I think we yeah, got a lot out a of it. A couple of muggles. Mm-hmm. muggles. 
Yeah, I mean, you, I mean you're yeah. definitely the, the shining example of like the like the most you can give and the most you can get out of it. It's very it's very flexible though. It's really interesting. It's sort of kinds. It's just like it's never about no. It's never no. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you know if you if you don't put too much into it or you can't put too much into it, that's fine. You can still play. Yeah. Right. And you really get that's what, that's where it's not it's not necessarily a tit for tat, but you do definitely get. Right. out of it as much as you want to put into mm-hmm. it. If you want to just put everything into it and just put all of your time for a month, like you'll get so much out of it. Because uh, the pros and cons, it's like it's, it, the demand is so ambitious right. that it, it just can't be a Chris and Matt and Kevin right. show. No it way. can't be. Right. No so you, you absolutely need new people to bring that in. If it doesn't, it's just not going to work. So right. the right. fact that we've gotten to 20 just shows yeah. that there are enough mm-hmm. people out there who are willing to do that. And it's just it comes back to you real quick. Right. I mean, it's not like a long sure, yeah. circle. You, you, can, you, you can really come back very yeah. quickly. I mean, for someone who had directed Zero the year before to come in, and participate and then at least direct one in a year, right? Which changes their perspective on directing in the first place. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? They've now walked that fire once. Now they're either going to be hungry for it again. They're going to yeah. push to do it again because they have the the confidence to do it and the support. Right. they know they have the support to do it. Right. Or they're going to say, you know what? Like, actually, I, I'm not in love with it. And yeah. I, then I, I've got, I've done the thing. I've gotten it off my chest. I've gotten it off my shoulders. And like, right. I'm good. Yeah. It's a very weird gamble, though, for Assorted Kinds. Like, I keep comparing Assorted Kinds to something like uh, Channel 101, which okay. is also trying yeah. to sustain itself, uh, you know, month after month. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but it's very much of like, here's, here's what we are. You come to us. Here's what we want. Right. You give us that, and then you can play here. And Assorted Kinds is all about like, you and what we can give to you and how we can foster you and it's like a very like sort of a gambit to 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 do that because totally. you're not necessarily getting anything out of it as a company or even just an organization like sure. usually you, s- you establish who you are and then everybody else molds themselves right. to to f- to fit into that uh that space but this is sort of like the opposite of that where we are whatever you want it to be and we're just going to support that no matter what. And I think that ultimately paid off uh, in in the way that we're talking about it, people being motivated. Oh, well, this is great. People aren't saying <laughs> no to this. And lo and behold, we did it. And now I want to do it again. So I think that's... Yeah. Well, there's plenty of places you can go and get no. Sure. Yeah. Right? And it's like there needs to be a place you can go and just find the yes. Totally. Because they because that place wants to see you try. Yeah. I mean, and and then there's no there's no script that gets forgotten for the most part. I mean, right. you sure. reminded me of Teachers Lounge like six months later. <laughs> I didn't even yeah. know you knew about that. Oh, dude, it's Ju- Juan yeah. read a script that he had that I don't even think we pitched, but was in the script vault mm. and was like, "Dude, I read this randomly, and this is great. You should pitch this again." Mm, yeah. Like everybody is just looking for that thing. Mm. I mean, I think all of us are. The spirit of it is, if we just can get that good thing out there, it's going to work. And it doesn't matter where it's come from, where right. it is. Let's just try to find that thing. And if we're all in it together, we all get credit. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And we're all going to get better together as, oh as my well. Gosh. Like, you know, yeah. every time we do a thing together, we we are refining our craft. Yeah. Right. No matter what, what uh, position you're playing on a thing, you're going to be refining your craft by just participating. Totally. And that's why I have FOMO. And when I'm not, when I miss a month, I've only done this. I've only missed one month. Mm-hmm. But like, I have FOMO because I'm like, man, I'm not there to like just analyze what's going on to right. refine my own interpretation of totally. this craft. So, yeah. So that's that's sort of where assorted kind. We know where assorted kinds is going. Yeah. Just making more and more stuff. What sure. about what about you guys individually? Mm. Want to talk about like where you guys are thinking next? What's next? Even if it's if it's not associated with assorted kinds, that's fine. Well, well assorted kinds will always be. Mm. There's always a corner of our minds. Oh, I hope so. Always. Um, we, uh, I mean, there definitely has been. We've got. We're so excited that this is coming out. Um, <clears throat> we're kind of like passively working on like a bigger writing project, like a little more passively, mm-hmm. which is great. Um, um, hopefully talk more about it in the future as it gets more concrete. But um, yeah, and just kind of Hayden's asking me every single day to start a new podcast. And, I am. Um, <clears throat> but now yeah, you know no, who will record it. Well, yeah, oh, there you go. God, don't say that. Uh, please, please, <laughs> please. Um, no, but um, yeah, hopefully something bigger is in the pipeline um, that we're, I'm, I'm at least really excited about and uh, hoping getting some live comedy shows out there. So make sure to follow us at Mike P. Morrissey. Just and follow, maybe, both us yeah, us. follow both of us at, at, at Mike Morrissey. P. Morrissey on Instagram and you guys will see yeah. the you live You can updates. follow me in person if you see me on the street. Where Hayden, the Hayden is Mike P. Morrissey's Guado. Mm. Mm. Guado. 
Oh, you mean like the little alien baby baby <laughs> yeah. man that comes out of his chest? Feeding off my fo- yeah. off my five hundred followers. That's cool. I would you guys, say that. Well, I would you know, say, know what I'm talking about. What movie I'm yeah. talking about? Yeah, Total Recall. Thank you. Of okay. course, Total Recall. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, edit, we'll edit that all in where yeah. you guys understand. Where we all say Here, here's about. here's the reaction I want in there, Kevin. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I'll edit that in there. Uh, Total Recall, Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would say a future project for me and Mike. We got a lot of things in in the works. Good. Uh, in the works. I would say that our, our tone has been influenced by by sort of kinds. We a lot of what we do now really is, has is thinking about what's what's the what's the realness of this idea. And let's bring that to life. And then let's pepper in the comedy. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, I think, has been a real big change because of Assorted Kinds. I think you guys taught us a lot about that. Cool. So I think going forward, the stuff that we do is always going to have a little bit of that ASK cool. on it. Also, nice. I, I'm not sure you can edit it out. I'm not sure if, if we're supposed to talk about it. But You Are My Person, it's a short mm. film that Hayden and oh, I wrote yes. oh, yeah. Yeah. for Dan Doby. We did. It's, it's really, really great. Mm. Uh, check it out. I don't it. know. It's still doing festivals and whatnot. I'm not sure where exactly to find it. At, I, at a certain it, festival, it won best narrative. It won. It what? just won best narrative nice. at the last festival, and now it's out in Colorado. Super proud of it. It's really, really great. So if you see it in the near future, check it out. You yes. are my person. I think there's an Instagram. You are my there person. Is, there yeah. is an yeah. Instagram. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, Beautiful. cool, guys. Well, yeah, you know where to find Kevin and I, assortedkinds.com. That's right. Uh, you can figure out what our personal things are from there. Yeah. Um, but thank you guys very much. Thanks for your time. Thank for you for your effort. Great job. Yay. Go watch Ow. Heads Up on AssortedKinds.com. Check it out. <laughs>